a gun is fired somewhere in your city. So what happens now? In the past, there was a slim chance the shooting would be reported to police at all. Even when it was, it took precious time, and there was often confusion regarding the location of the shooting and other pertinent information. At least, that's how things were. ShotSpotter has changed all that. By utilizing advanced technology honed over two decades, we have automated the process. We monitor gunfire activity 24-7, so if a gun is fired in any area within ShotSpotter coverage, the system detects, locates, and immediately alerts police of the gunshot. So, how does it work? It starts with acoustic sensors that are placed on buildings or lampposts throughout a neighborhood. If a gun is fired anywhere in the area, multiple sensors detect and timestamp the sound. The precise location of the gunshot is determined based on the amount of time it takes for the sound of the gunshot to travel to each individual sensor, effectively triangulating the sound. The exact location of the detected gunshot is indicated by a dot on a map. Once an alert is generated, it is immediately sent to our IRC, or Incident Review Center, where trained acoustic experts then analyze each incident in mere seconds, determining if the sound is gunfire. ShotSpotter acoustic analysts receive extensive training on reviewing and classifying gunfire by distinguishing gunshots from other impulsive sounds that are not gunshots. In addition, they are trained to append additional contextual information such as multiple shooter alerts or full automatic weapons alerts that can prove to be essential tactical intelligence for law enforcement agencies responding to these crimes. The entire transaction takes place in less than 60 seconds. With the real-time shot spotter alerts, police can immediately be dispatched to the scene. Utilizing the gunfire audio clip and tactical information, Officers can approach an exact location quickly and safely to engage the shooter, interview witnesses, and collect key evidence at the crime scene. ShotSpotter's Respond app enables patrol officers to receive real-time alerts quickly and effectively in their patrol car, on MDTs, or on the go on their smartphones. The ShotSpotter alert system is used in more than 90 cities and is an invaluable tool to help make communities safer by responding to gunshot incidents faster, making it easy to find evidence and reducing the risk for police officers. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Major John Quigley with the Atlanta Police Department. I work in the Strategy and Special Projects Division. And one of my major functions or roles is to coordinate the technology strategy for the Atlanta Police Department. Uh, ShotSpotter, as you've just seen how it operates, was, uh, you know, we're fortunate that Georgia Power has stepped up to pilot this with us and has uh, funded it for a year. Um, we're also working with Georgia State University uh, Criminal Justice Department for them to do an evaluation of how we deploy it and ultimately give us some third-party feedback on how effective it is and what things we might want to do in order to, to make it even better. So it's a, a one-year cost of about $250,000. Um, right now, because of the ransomware attack, we're kind of off of the one-year timeline, and ultimately, uh, you know, we may have to have that extended. Uh, it currently is deployed in a five-square-mile area downtown or down in the, the city of Atlanta. You know, New York has 60 square miles, and I think uh, Chicago is, is trying to in input 100 square miles of, uh, of shot spotter. The city of Atlanta is 140 square miles. So we're only, we only have a, a small piece, five square miles at this point in time. So one zone began uh, responding to alerts effective the 13th of November. And really where we have it deployed, four zones intersect or four different districts intersect. And ultimately we've got to bring those other three uh, districts online. So what can it do? What's really different, you know, as, as we said, is, hey, we know precisely where to go. We get alerted within 30 to 45 seconds. They said a minute, but they do it even faster than that. So 
you know, it's information we have never had before. Most of the time it's vague. It's, hey, I heard shots behind my house or I heard something down the street and nobody knows, you know, when it, when it was. And those calls can frequently be delayed. Somebody's not calling in. It's not a high priority call when somebody isn't hit. Uh, so you're going out there, you're not finding something. In this, this way, we're able to get there swiftly and precisely. Okay, and this is our goals here, really to uh, reduce violent crime. There's weapon discharges in this five uh, square mile area, and I'll show you some of the data on that. Reduce the response time, recover more evidence, obviously identify illegal shooters, and uh, increase arrest of those in involved. Strengthen trust with the community because we're responding and the community knows we're responding. Ultimately, you know, we feel that they'll they'll feel better about it because sometimes when we go out there and they tell us they heard it behind us, we're driving around trying to find anything or see something and you really don't know where to go and they're not necessarily knowing that we're coming to that precise location. And then hopefully we'll get some a little bit more help. You saw that uh, the platform is available on MDTs and, and uh, handheld devices. Uh, not all our officers have city issued phones. So, you know, that's something we're trying to get to is uh, put a, a handheld device in every officer's hand, but that we're not quite there yet. So this is what it looks like. This is not the city of Atlanta. I didn't bring uh, where we are, ours was, but bottom line is it pops up a map and it shows you the area that you've got coverage in outlined by the red uh, boundary. And those little yellow uh, balloons indicate how many shots were fired. And those are likely, uh, you know, weapon discharges. If the balloon is pink, then it's a possible weapon discharge, you know. But you can see that one of them had seven and, and highlighted, or the one with the little uh, circle down the bottom is, uh, is the one that we're going to take a, a look at. Uh, it'll also pop up that, hey, this came up at, at the time, the beat area and how many rounds it was. When you click on that little uh, icon here on the side, you'll end up uh, pulling up the next view. And you'll see, as, we, as they showed, the map or a Google map of, of where on the ground the, uh, the rounds are likely to be located. It's going to be right next to that you know, building there, right, you know, pretty much 20 feet, within 20 feet of, of that location. That circle is a 25 meter radius around the location you want to go on the ground to look for evidence. And ultimately, uh, you want to knock on the doors, uh, you know, for the residents or people around that particular spot and alert them and find out what they saw, that type of thing. And we have little door hangers that we can hang on the doors to let them know that we were out there if nobody was there, that they can give us information if they found that a round went through their house or something like that. Uh, so this is the kind of precise information we've never had before. Hey, we know exactly where to go on the ground because that's where the shots were fired. Okay, and that's, uh, that's very unique. So then you can click on it and it will give you a Google view of, you know, what it looked like on the ground at that particular spot, the most recent Google view. So you, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you know, you'd know where you're headed. And again, that can be helpful. So last week, in the city of Atlanta, we had 20, what, 24 shot spotter alerts and 23 911 calls. That's pretty good where we get 96% uh, 911 calls on weapon discharges in the area. Um, and we want that to be high. We want the, the community to alert us when something happens and we want to respond on their behalf, uh, that type of thing. But in this particular case last week, nobody was hit. Uh, we typically average 35 to 45 weapons discharges in this area a week. So last week was a slower week, you know, that type of thing. Uh, you can see here that in some cases you've got shot spotter alerts uh, and you've got, you know, actually here they kind of matched up. You had six in B303 and you had six 911 calls. Sometimes you'll get, you know, so many alerts and fewer 911 calls, but here they, they fairly well matched. And in one case, actually got more 911 calls than you had alerts, or a couple cases. So the, the first one there, you had three and 101s beating only one call. So really, you want to get calls on all of them. And you can see that in the past few months, 
you know, we had 195 uh, shot spotter alerts in September, went down uh, in October down to 156, climbed back up to 161 in November. Uh, so really the, the platform's been operational since one March, but we haven't been able to respond because we had to get software on our computers and ultimately uh, do some things and, and do some training for them to be able to respond. So it's uh, gone live here in November. It requires multiple sensors to hear it in order for it to triangulate, and there's times where the system will not alert based on, you know, maybe the indoor or being inside a vehicle, the weapon going off, and sometimes uh, uh, environmental factors, it can be wind, it can be rain, you know, different things will, will diffuse the sound of the weapon going off and not reach the sensors clearly enough for them to get an accurate uh, reading on it. So uh, ShotSpotter will tell you that, that they that they can uh, identify, you know, about 85% or 80%, but they do far better than that. I'm sure they do well over 90% that they're, they're able to tell us. So again, why ShotSpotter? For all the reasons that I mentioned that were our goals. Uh, you know, we want to reduce violent crime and illegal gunfire in that area. We want to reduce it and ultimately uh, put those that are discharging uh, weapons in jail. You know, there's not a reason to do it. It's really kind of strange, you know, if I go back, this, you see that there are <coughs> multiple rounds going off. The blue indicates a single, and uh, this second line is 100. You can't see the scale very well on this line, but uh, 100 is uh, the second line up. So there's quite a few where there's multiple rounds, and then the, the gray area is where it's possible gunfire, those pink ones that I told you that uh, will show up from time to time. But why they discharge single rounds, whether they're testing the weapon, whether they're, it's uh, somebody saying I'm home or saying I'm leaving, uh, that type of thing. We don't know why they, they just, you know, fire off around here and there. But uh, the, the thing is we want to stop it, you know, that type of thing. Uh, questions? Anybody have any questions on it? Any questions for the major? One of the th three things that, uh, go ahead. Did you have to uh, pay for the, the hardware, or is this more of a subscription service? No, this is really a su subscription service. I mean, they, they're, there's three concerns that I have. Number one is that they charge $250,000 a year. Now, they put in the sensors, and it takes about 20 sensors to cover a square mile, so I've got about 100 sensors out there. The, the sensors aren't uh, probably about three times as big as a coffee cup there that type of thing out there. Uh, but after they deploy it, they're still charging me $250,000 a year, okay? And I don't like their business model that, hey, you're gonna charge me the same price after you've deployed it, and all I'm using is your software, really. You know, that type of thing. Uh, and they want a minimum of three square miles, so I've gotta put in three square miles. Well, I may not need three square miles. Uh, in a lot of places, you know, it can be apartment complexes that, that we're having gunfire, and we don't need three square miles beyond the, uh, the apartment complex that has, a, has an issue, that type of thing. So I would be looking for a vendor where I have mobile shot spotter devices, and I can deploy them in an area that I want covered, and then when I solve that problem, I can redeploy them or shift them around, that type of thing. So shot spotter charges you, you know, 250 there, which is a concern. Uh, the DA, how many people is he going to prosecute? How many are we going to successfully take into custody and prosecute for that two hundred fifty thousand dollars to be worth, you know, worth his while? So I have, you know, we don't know that yet, but I'm just saying, hey, that will be interesting. Many of our cases don't go to uh, court within a year's time. So uh, the thing is, hey, am I getting the, the bang for my buck in terms of prosecution? The other thing is a, a false alarm sy syndrome, so to speak. We had twenty four weapons discharges, we didn't have anybody hit. Um, we have quite a few burglar alarm systems out there deployed, and you folks know that you've already have them. They'll go off when it rains and when something happens, and there's a lot of false alarms. There's not as many, you know, true alarms. Well, what about ShotSpotter? If I'm responding to a 25S ShotSpotter call, priority two, rushing to get there, and there's nothing there, the guy squeezes off around, they're already gone, uh, and I do that 24 times and don't catch anybody uh, or see anything, then am I going to respond as aggressively, you know, 
in the future. So the thing is, hey, you know, uh, I'm just concerned with what what's the turnout going to be? Are the officers going to say, hey, you know, 99% of the time these aren't these aren't legit, or what? So we're we're just concerned with that. So what did you you had a question, sir? Well, I was, it was kind of your final point. Um, I didn't know if you have seen examples where the system tells you there's X amount of shots fired, and then the ensuing investigation results in a discrepancy. And the reason I'm Bring that up is I actually, uh, when I was in the military, had to deploy this technology in Mogadishu and Baghdad. And when you get into a really urban environment, mm -hmm. we found that reverberations would confuse it such that either A, it would um, hear multiple shots but um, attribute it to echo. And so it would say one, but then you get there, there were, there were multiple, mm -hmm. or the vice versa where there are multiple and they say, no, it's not, you know. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the opposite, where it's one, but they think the echo is multiple, and so you go in. So I didn't know if your investigation into what it tells you is matching up, because it's been 20, 15, 20 yeah. years since I've been. You know, I could tell you, it, we've had an instance where I was a night commander, and uh, we had somebody shot and actually killed on the street, and uh, caught the, the rounds, and we found, you know, the shell casings exactly where it said, and actually there were more shell casings than there were, you know, shots on the system. So it won't necessarily be identical, but <clears throat> I would say it's, it's, it does its job well. My, con my concern again is, is cost, required coverage area, what am I getting in terms of, uh, you know, from the justice, criminal justice system throughout, and then, oh, by the way, I don't want to respond. Uh, one of the next steps, and, and this isn't part of this discussion, but we've purchased a, a product from Microsoft called AWARE, and we're integrating ShotSpotter into AWARE, and then we're going to bring the 200 plus cameras that are in that area into AWARE, and now I'll be able to, the cameras will be able to turn and show me where the shots were fired, you know, instantly. So that's another step in the process. We were trying to get that done before we deployed it, which is why we were a little bit behind uh, in terms of the, the one year, uh, you know, pilot. but. You know, with the uh, the ransomware attack and some things that have gone on, we just haven't been able to get you know uh, the Microsoft Aware platform you know entirely up and running and, and the cameras fully integrated at this point. So that that'll be the next step, and we'll do that during the course of next year. Questions? Anybody else? Anything else? Thank you, Major. Right. Appreciate Thank you. Being here.